Hey everyone, this lesson is on the skin condition known as seborrheic keratosis. In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the risk factors for getting this condition. We're also going to talk about some of the pathophysiology as to why this condition occurs. And then we're going to get into the characteristics of the skin lesions in seborrheic keratosis. And then we're going to talk about how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So seborrheic keratosis is a benign dermatologic or skin condition involving hyperkeratotic lesions. We're going to talk about more specific details of the characteristics of these lesions later on in this lesson. These lesions are also known as wisdom spots, age spots, or barnacles of aging, and they are actually benign epithelial tumors, and they can often be mistaken for melanoma. They have certain characteristics that may be in common with melanoma, and by appearance, they can look quite concerning. But we're going to talk about some ways to distinguish these lesions from melanoma later on in this lesson. Now, there are several different influencing factors that can increase the chances of having this condition. One of them is going to be genetic inheritance. Some cases of this condition can be due to autosomal dominant inheritance. So in that case, one of your parents would have had to have had this condition. And in those cases, the skin lesions in seborrheic keratosis are going to be more numerous. So that is going to be one way that individuals can have this condition. It's actually going to be the most common benign tumors in the elderly. So that means that one of the risk factors is going to be increasing age. And in fact, the prevalence of this condition increases with increasing age. And then another factor that can influence whether a patient can have this condition is the pigment of their skin. So the prevalence of this condition actually decreases with increasing skin pigmentation, which would mean on the other end, as the skin pigmentation decreases, the prevalence of this condition increases. So those are a few different risk factors that can increase your chances for having this condition. Genetic inheritance, so a family history is going to be one risk factor. Another one is going to be increasing age. And then another one is going to be decreased skin pigmentation. Those are all going to be risk factors for having seborrheic keratosis. Now let's talk about some of the proposed mechanisms as to why these skin lesions form. So we're going to talk about some of the pathophysiology here. Before we talk about the pathophysiology, it's important to note that the entire pathophysiological mechanism is unknown. But what is known is that immature keratinocytes and melanocytes, which are pigmented cells, these undergo clonal expansion. So those skin cells multiply to form the skin lesions in seborrheic keratosis. The reason this happens is not entirely known. It's believed that genetics is involved, and this makes sense. We talked about there is autosomal dominant inheritance, so there is a family history of having more numerous amounts of these skin lesions in some patients. And it's also believed that fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 is also involved. So a change in FGFR3 may lead to clonal expansion of some of these cells, which can ultimately lead to the skin lesions in this condition. Let's talk about the characteristics of these skin lesions. So here is a picture of a typical lesion in seborrheic keratosis. So these lesions are going to be papules or plaques. So a papule is a raised skin lesion less than 10 millimeters or less than one centimeter in diameter, whereas a plaque is going to be a raised skin lesion greater than 10 millimeters or greater than one centimeter in diameter. So they are raised skin lesions. They're also well demarcated. So that means that the border of the skin lesion in relation to the surrounding skin is very delineated. So you can see that there's a very abrupt change in the border and the skin lesion and the surrounding skin. So it's very well demarcated. This skin lesion is also hyperpigmented, which means that it is darker in coloration than the surrounding skin. So it can be different shades, anywhere from pink to brown to black in coloration. These lesions are also hyperkeratotic. We mentioned that the lesions in this condition are hyperkeratotic lesions, which means that the lesions themselves are composed of many, many different skin cells. So they become very thickened. The skin lesion is often described as waxy or greasy. So it looks waxy or greasy in appearance. They're going to be round to oval in shape, and they often have a stuck-on appearance. They look like something has just been stuck on the patient's skin. So those are going to be some defining features of the skin lesions in this condition. What's also important to make note of is that these skin lesions are going to be asymptomatic. There's not going to be any symptoms, meaning that there's not going to be itching or pain from these lesions. Here is another image of these skin lesions. Again, this is where there are multiple lesions, but they all have these similar characteristics. And here's another image of these skin lesions where it's a more severe case. And here is a more close-up image of these skin lesions. You can see that, again, they are going to become very, very enlarged and thickened over time. And they often become darkened over time as well. 
there is a particular distribution of these lesions. Oftentimes they're going to affect the trunk, so you can see them on the patient's back. They can affect the arms, including the hands, so the forearms, the hands can all be affected. They can also affect the face in some individuals, so these are going to be the most common sites of where these lesions are going to be found, but they can occur almost everywhere in the body except on the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. So the palms of the hands and soles of the feet are not going to have these lesions. So if you see a lesion like this on the palms of the hands or soles of the feet, it's going to be a different condition. Some other important clinical features to make note of is that these lesions change over time. Oftentimes they're going to start out as less pigmented, smaller, and flat. They actually may start out as a macule or a patch. A macule is going to be a flat skin lesion less than 10 millimeters in diameter, and a patch is going to be a flat skin lesion greater than 10 millimeters. So they can start out flat, and over time they can become more pigmented, larger, although they're going to slowly get larger. They're not going to rapidly increase in size. They can also become more and more raised. They will become velvety and varicose, which means that they can resemble a wart in some cases, and they become more numerous. So again, they often start out with only one or only a few of them. They're less pigmented, smaller, and flat, and over time they become more numerous, more pigmented, larger, and raised. There are a couple of other important points to make note of with regards to these lesions. There can be a sudden onset of many of these types of lesions. And when I say types of these lesions, they're not going to be seborrheic keratosis. They're going to be a dermatologic manifestation of an underlying condition. And these lesions are often going to be pruritic, which means they're oftentimes going to be itchy with an inflammatory base. So this is going to be different than the skin lesions in seborrheic keratosis. But if you see a rapid onset of many, many of these lesions, we have to think about something known as la celle tre la sign, which is a sign of an underlying cancer or malignancy. So again, very important, if there is a rapid onset of many, many of these types of skin lesions, it's going to look like seborrheic keratosis, but these skin lesions, again, are oftentimes going to be pruritic, which means that they're going to be itchy and they may be inflamed, or there can be rapid increases in number and size of pre-existing seborrheic keratosis skin lesions. So those can occur, and that would be known as a la celle tre la sign, which indicates an underlying malignancy. So it's a finding or manifestation of an underlying cancer. And then some other skin conditions can lead to some of these types of skin lesions as well. And one condition is inflammatory dermatitis or eczema. How do clinicians diagnose and treat this condition? Seborrheic keratosis is going to be a clinical diagnosis. So the look of the lesion itself, some of those risk factors we talked about before, are going to be enough to make the diagnosis of this condition. Melanoma should be ruled out. Again, these lesions can be mistaken for melanoma. They can look very concerning. There are a few different points to make note of with regards to the differences with melanoma skin lesions and the lesions in this condition. One is that the skin lesions of melanoma don't have very clear borders. They can be very irregular borders. They can have very different colorations within the skin lesion itself. There may be some opening or some discharge from the lesion itself. Those are all going to be very concerning findings with the skin lesion. But again, it's important to look out for melanoma. And this is especially true if there's going to be many, many of these types of lesions. So if there's many, many seborrheic keratosis lesions, it can be very difficult to look at each of those lesions to make sure that there's nothing concerning about them. So it's especially important to look out for melanoma when there are many, many lesions because there may be a melanoma lesion within all of those lesions and a clinician or patient may not be able to find them. If it is a lacelle tre la sign, it's also important to assess for underlying cancer. Some of the cancers that can lead to this dermatologic manifestation include colon cancer, gastric adenocarcinomas, and lymphoma. But other cancers can also cause this to occur as well. And a biopsy may be performed in some cases, especially if unsure of the diagnosis. If the skin lesion itself has some characteristics that are concerning, a biopsy of that lesion to assess for a skin cancer like melanoma may be important. So biopsies can be performed in some cases. 
how do clinicians treat this condition? If it is seborrheic keratosis, if it is not lacelle trelasse sign and it's not melanoma, the condition itself is a benign condition. So oftentimes no treatment is necessary, but sometimes the patient may want treatment for cosmetic reasons. So removal of these types of lesions can be done for cosmetic reasons. And the main way to remove these lesions is through cryotherapy. So multiple freeze-thaw cycles with liquid nitrogen onto the lesion can help resolve and remove that lesion. And then shave excisions can also be performed to remove the lesion as well. If you want to learn more about other dermatology conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.